ready for takeoff. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gaurav Singh, and I'm an engineer at Pattern. So today we are going to talk about uh, static typing in Ruby using RBS. So yeah. So first of all, what is this uh, typing business like? What do we mean by types, right? So broadly, there are two categories of programming languages. One are which are uh, strictly type languages, and another is which are dynamically type languages. So let's take the first example here of uh, a Java code. So here, uh, a string variable, str variable has type string, right? Uh, which contains the value hello. But if we try to assign it value as integer, we get the syntax error. While in the dynamically typed languages, type is associated with the value that variable is holding. So you can see over here in the second example uh, for the Ruby code, so name, type of the name variable is a string when it's holding the value who am I, and its value, uh, its type is integer when uh, it's holding the value five. So type in the dynamically typed language is associated with the value. Okay. So what is the problem uh, with the dynamic typing? So let's consider the first example here, uh, Java code. So we have a simple add function and which is accepting two arguments. Uh, both of them are integer types and we are just returning their sum. Now, if I'm trying to add, uh, pass those arguments with the string type, uh, I'm going to get a syntax error, right? Now let's consider the second example of the Ruby code. Again, I'm passing two arguments and I'm going to sum them. But if I'm passing the argument string, it's not going to give me any error when I'm writing the code, but it's going to give me the error at the runtime. So these kind of issues which we face uh, with the dynamic typing languages, uh, like people would say we can add extensive test code, but we all know like uh, sometimes we, uh, humans do make mistake. So to overcome these problems, static typing has been introduced. Uh, what? So advantages of uh, type checking. So first thing, it's a proven fact into multiple languages like uh, JavaScript and Python. There are very popular static uh, type checking libraries. Uh, TypeScript is the very popular version of the JavaScript and MyPy is a very popular uh, package in uh, Python. Uh, it eliminates a lot of errors like uh, no method error, nil class errors at the runtime, better integration with IDs. Varun has just showed like how to integrate in the IDs. Uh, it provides documentation for the code. So like when we annotate our code with the uh, static, static typing annotations, we get implicit uh, annota uh, documentation for our code at that point of time. Uh, so like type checking, what are type checking systems are there in Ruby? So this is some, not something new in the Ruby ecosystem. Uh, like back in 2009, uh, there was something called Diamondback Ruby or uh, Druby. Then Tuft University came up with RDL and then Stripe launched its Sorbet. And then in 2019, Ruby core team launched RBS. Now, what is RBS uh, exactly? So the RBS stands for uh, Ruby syntax. Uh, it is basically, uh, it provides you can define your Ruby code in RBS. Basically, you're trying to say how my Ruby code is going to look like. You can consider this something as uh, type definition files of JavaScript.t.ts extension files, which we generally use. So it basically provides the structure. RBS does not uh, like check the uh, type of the Ruby code. It only provides the programming interface to define the structure of your uh, Ruby code. So. What options does RBS comes up with? So there are a lot of options uh, which RBS provides, which is basically for uh, passing the code, seeing what kind of AST it generates, how to annotate, list, probing the ancestors of the Ruby class. Uh, in the scope of this talk, we are mostly uh, concerned about the kind of code which we are going to generate for our Ruby code. Uh, so we'll be focusing on the prototype option. So RBS prototype comes up with three options, RB, RBI, and 
runtime. So RB uses uh, syntactical parsing of the Ruby code. RBI, uh, so Sorbet is a popular library and for Sorbet there are uh, RBI files which are generated by for Sorbet. And to convert those Sorbet uh, RBI files into RBS, uh, we use RBI. And then third option is uh, runtime. So runtime is basically it loads your class into memory and then try to see what all functions, uh, methods, and attributes are defined on top of that class or object, and then uh, generate the RBS code for that uh, object. So uh, let's take a very simple example here. So we have a class uh, user. It has two attributes, name and age, and uh, we have just a, a constructor over there. Okay, so we are going to generate uh, the RBS file using the RB option. So the output of this uh, command will be something like uh, the, sig op uh, the sig option you are seeing over here. So attribute reader name is untyped and age is untyped. And if you see the function uh, sig for the function, so name of the function and then all the at, uh, arguments which this function accepts and its return type. Uh, so over here you will see all these uh, attributes are untyped. Untyped basically means it can accept any type of uh, value. But the basic idea of uh, like having static typing is not to have uh, untyped value. We need to have defined some type of uh, value which we want to accept for at our attributes, right? So let's change it to uh, like the kind of uh, values we want for our attributes. So for example, for name, uh, we want a string and for age, we want integer. So here we have defined uh, declared a name as a string, age as integer, and uh, initialize accepts two parameters. One is a string, another is integer, and returns nothing. Okay, so let's take the example over here. So what I have done is that I have tried to uh, instantiate this user class with uh, two kind uh, with two arguments, and both of them are string, right? So and uh, if you see on the previous slide, we have uh, one string and one uh, integer, right? So this is going to give me uh, error. Uh, first, so error says like string type is not accepted because argument, uh, argument type is integer. So these kind of uh, errors we, we can catch very early when we are trying to annotate our code uh, with RBS. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens with the uh, dynamic attributes. So here we have a code in which we are dynamically defined getters and setter for attributes, name, age, and gender. So if I'm going to use RB option, it only does the syntactic parsing of the Ruby code. So it's not able to identify what all methods are there into the class. So it only says, okay, this attribute is there, which, has, which is of the array type um, of name, age, and sex, right? So to overcome this problem, uh, we can use runtime option, which we had discussed earlier. So what runtime will do is that we'll give it, uh, we'll give it the path of the uh, code where that class is defined, and then what class do we want to generate RBS code for? Okay, so, and once we uh, do the runtime, run the command, we'll see that it has loaded the class into the memory, and then it has seen the age as method, then age, like you can set the value for the age as the meta method, gender, and setting the value for the gender. Okay, so uh, now let's see a bit more detail into uh, for different kind of functions, what kind of RBS SIGs we can write. So let's take the first example over here. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have a method called uh, greet, and this is going to accept as uh, an optional argument for the class method. Okay, so for the optional arguments, anything which can be nilable, uh, we are going to use question mark to define that this value can be nil. So if you see at the line number 11, uh, it, the function greet is accepting uh, an argument with a string type which can be nil. So we can uh, like call the greet function without any argument also. But if you're going to call greet, then it should be a string only. There is no other option. Let's take another example where uh, like our function can have a variable number of arguments. So here we have uh, example class which have function names name ends with and it accepts like 
uh, name argument is fixed and then we are going to have variable number of arguments using uh, split operator. So if you see at the line number 13 over here, so the first argument is fixed, like you have to, uh, whenever you are going to call this function, you have to provide the name. But uh, using the uh, splat operator again, it's going to accept the variable number of arguments over here. And in this case, the return type is boolean because the function is checking whether the name ends with particular value or not. Okay, so let's take another example. Uh, so we have a class called example, then it has a function multiply. And it is going to accept two arguments. First is arg and then, uh, another is multiplier, right? If you see the shell code over here, so we can call this multiply function with string as well as uh, integer or float values also, right? So if I'm going to call it with a string, then the default value of the uh, default value of the multiplier is five. And it's going to print Ruby five times, that string uh, five times. So in this case, I provided argument as Ruby, and then it is printing Ruby five times. And if I'm going to give argument as integer uh, at the line number thirteen, if you'll see, so it's going to return the value as twenty. So this function can return uh, a string as well as integer, both kind of uh, values. So to handle these kind of cases, uh, RBS has introduced uh, union types. So if you see the signature for this particular function uh, at the line number 19, so uh, first argument ARG, it can be either a string or it can be either integer. And then we have optional attribute of integer, which is the multiplier. And the return type, if you'll see, it, it is again can be either uh, a string or integer type. Okay, so another example is uh, with the keyword arguments. So you can see over here uh, in the output, uh, if I'm going to give a string and I'm not going to the second argument, if I'm not going to provide the second argument, it's only going to give me the first character of that string. And if I'm going to give the range of that uh, string, suppose like uh, range four, then the first four characters of that particular string is going to be written as an array. Okay, so uh, to, for these kind of functions, if you'll see the, the first argument is a string, then we have our range as name parameter over here, and you see the question mark which denotes that this is an optional parameter. And the return type over here is uh, like, you can have either a string or array of a string as the return type for this, uh, this function. Okay, so now the duck typing, so like, what happens when we have uh, our objects or class where the duct typing is introduced. So let's uh, look at this class over here. So we have this class car, which has like dynamic methods, wheels, engine, and roof. And then we are uh, like setting, like uh, creating getters and setter for these uh, methods over here, right? Now, uh, if I'm going to generate the RBS code for this using the syntactical parsing method, using the RB, so, uh, it's going only going to generate uh, the attributes. It's not going to give me the, all the methods which are there in the uh, car class, right? And car is inheriting for from my car. So if you see over here, if I'm going to create uh, call wheels on my car object, it's saying that my car does not have method wheels, right? But if you see the code over here, the my car is inheriting from the car. So it should have that method wheels. The reason it's not able to identify why this method is not there is because uh, RBS code does not have that uh, method into the RBS signatures. So, um, so there can be scenarios when we cannot have RBS code which, which is like defined properly for a module or for a particular class which we are going to use. So to handle these cases, uh, concept of interfaces has been introduced. So you can say like, I have a interface which is like behaves like a car, and then it has all these methods, wheels, engine, and roof. And when you include that method into your uh, RBS code, then you can call these uh, like method wheels, engine, and roof on your object. So it's not going to give us error after that. Okay, 
so uh, now comes the steep so all the errors uh, type checking errors which we had seen earlier they were generated using steep uh, so steep is the tool which uh, actually does the type checking so what happens is that rbs only provides us the syntax it does not provide some mechanism to check uh, whether the ruby code corresponding ruby code is correct with rbs code or not we can only generate the prototype using rbs steep takes input of the ruby code and the rbs uh, signatures and then sees like whether the code is correct over there or not so the way we can uh, set up rbs similarly we can set up uh, steep also we just have to do steep in it and it will create a, uh, a steep file into our project so basically we have to configure a steep then we have to define like where our uh, signatures are going to reside so here in this case they are going to reside in the sig folder uh, what folder does it have to check so if you see that it's going to check in the lib folder the directory name where it's going to check things and if we have suppose some files which we have we doesn't have generated rbs code for them then we can ignore them and we have to tell if you are going to if you are using some standard library or some gem from the outside then we have to tell steep that load rbs for these libraries also uh steep comes with uh, a stats option also so here what i have done is that um, i have checked out uh, discord rb uh, did some annotation on top of that and then try to see like uh, uh, what is the stats for all those annotations over here right so you can see like there are some files which are like 100% covered for some files their coverage is uh, like in the 50s or 40s depending on like what how much uh, detail i have uh, like provided for those files right so steep comes with these options also and if we have to check like whether uh, everything in our code has gone uh, sorry in our annotation has gone fine or not then we can just call a steep check and uh, it will parse all the code and say okay things are good or bad whatever depends depending on it so uh, this i have run on discord rb and i ignored like lots of files because annotating annotating all of them was not practically possible at that point of time but you can see like uh, as the end result there are not many errors okay so now comes the sorbet so uh, the primary difference between steep and the sorbet is that uh, uh, for the rbs we have to uh, like put the sig files into a different uh, uh, into a different file while sorbet is an annotation based system so if you see that uh, for the class people for every function we have provided the annotation like sig void for the constructor and uh, for the add function we have a uh, sig in which it's going to accept the params uh, as a person and then it's going to return uh, array of persons so let's just compare the rbs code and the sorbet code just for the sake of like what is the difference or what are the similarities over here so if you see over here uh, for the add function um so the basic gist of these signatures are same the add function on the left hand side uh, is the rbs code so you will see it's accepting the person uh, object and returning an array of uh, persons on the right hand side you will see so one difference in uh, sorbet is that all the uh, function calls the uh, in the sig we have to define them as hashes so when we are saying params then we have to provide person person is our uh, argument name and then type of that argument and then it returns uh, array of persons second is this uh, remove function so remove function will accept person object and return depending on if that uh, person is there in the list or not it's going to return person object which it it has deleted from the list so you can see over here uh, the question mark there in the rbs code which tells like uh, we can we might return nil also and on the uh, sorbet code you will see that uh, there is concept of nilable class so uh, the idea over here is that if it's going to return something then it will return uh, the person object but if it does not then it can be nil also uh, same the concept same concept as in the search function also 
So it's going to accept a string over here and might or might not return a person object. Uh, person object. Right. Now we can uh, use this in our CI CD pipeline and Sorbet comes up with uh, RuboCop gem also, RuboCop Sorbet. So we might not necessarily have to like uh, use it in our Jenkins or in our uh, GitHub CI CD. Uh, while for the RBS, we have to like add additional check in our CI CD uh, for like uh, doing the uh, type checkings. Uh, there are few things which are still not supported uh, in the RBS code. Uh, it's in active development right now, so uh, these things are expected. One thing which I feel is that there are multiple options to generate the output uh, in the uh, RBS, like RBI, RB, RB, and the runtime. So there should be a tool using which we can compare the output of syntactical parsing and the runtime code generation and see which one has the better resemblance to our code. Then there are some uh, useful gems we can use uh, for like uh, uh, generating the code for uh, uh, for our annotations, sort, parlor, and uh, sorbet rails, RBS rails, and pronto sorbet. Yep, that's it. Thank you.